Hi lovelies. Um, I so want to do a haul for you guys today, but I am unable to because I cannot move my left side other than move my hand up like this. But above the elbow, I cannot move it. And the only reason I can move it now is because I put one of our friends, this guy, on my elbow. Good times. So I am attached to my heating pad and this and painkillers and I've just been watching The Last Ship and crying for no apparent reason. Um, but, and I'm gonna cry right now, <laughs> pain does crazy things to you, but, um, I'm so sorry. Like, it's honestly just the pain. Um, I'm so happy, like, I don't, this is really weird, but anyways, I know you guys will understand, but, um, oh, last night I went out and took the most beautiful walk with my dog, and she just ran and ran and ran on the sun, on the sand, and, um, she she usually she likes running in the sand a lot but like chihuahuas are not really runners but she just kept going full speed and then she would stop and look at me and i'm like i see you and she would just take off again and so we walked a really long ways actually down to one of the sea turtle nests and then we walked back and then this morning i got to see the most beautiful sunset sunrise oh my gosh sunrise that I have ever seen in my entire life and um I almost didn't go but I was wide awake this morning even though I'd had my sleepy time tea which usually makes me like real groggy and stuff and um I went out with my best friend Linz and we um we had just had um coastal flooding so they had the lifeguard chairs up on the dunes so we like climbed up on the lifeguard chair they're real short and um i have bella in her sling and it was the most magnificent thing I, I honestly said to her i said to lens i said in all my years on this earth this is the most beautiful thing i've ever seen i can't even like explain to people there was actually like a prism above the clouds that were such vivid rainbow colors and I've never seen that maybe that's like a, very, a really usual thing for maybe the south or something I don't know but um I was telling my mom I feel like Dr. Seuss and God were like playing with the clouds like I feel like they were just like having fun with the clouds because they were just crazy and all these shapes and they kept morphing into these other shapes and then it was just crystal clear above them and the water, the ocean, looked like mercury. For you younger kids, I don't know if you guys know what mercury looks like. It looked like liquid metal. Like silver-ish metal. It's actually mercury. But, um, uh, yeah, it was just the most... Oh. And so when I came back, like my heart is just so happy. And my heart is still so happy, but... It's just the pain gets to you. Like I, um, um, like my, my dad gets pretty mean, like grumpy when his pain gets to him. I think that's what most people get, like crabby. And I can get um, snappy, <clears throat> but that's pretty rare. I have to be kind of like pushed or my buttons pushed or something. Um, but I'm more cry <laughs> at really weird um, things like just now when I was talking about something beautiful and happy and um, just my anxiety gets really bad um, and then I get into like the world is ending kind of mentality like this is wrong and this is wrong and this is gonna last forever and I don't want Bella to have an owner that like can't pe even pet her and I'm such a horrible daughter and friend and so, which are, is an awesome thing to do when you're in horrible pain is to depress yourself. Like, what? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I mean, I don't want to get into, like, a theological debate, but 
this is my channel and my opinion and I do not know how people cope with chronic pain without God like God equals hope to me and so if you want to see it through my eyes like I don't know how people deal with chronic pain without hope so for you people that don't believe in God or haven't don't know about him yet like that's how I was I um, I always believed in God but I didn't know about like Jesus because I grew up up north and I just always felt really judged and like uh, people would be like uh, what the hell is wrong with you you're a freaking idiot if I asked like hey like who is this Christ guy like is it a real person or like just a story and like what's the whole deal with like the Bible is it like a storybook like I did not know it was like pure ignorance and um, but I always had like a need in me to know about it and to be baptized like I didn't even really know I didn't know what baptism was like the sim symbolism is that the right word symbolism behind it um, until much later in my life but I always had a desire to be baptized like so weird but um, but yeah, for any of those of you that just maybe don't know or don't care to you, that's a little breakdown of something that you can understand. I don't know how people get through this without hope, and I think that's why it really um, hurts my soul a little bit when I hear other people talking to one another even that have chronic pain or just people that don't understand chronic pain, and they say, well, it's not cancer, and you're like, yeah, because cancer can kill you and chronic pain can't no that's not true because um, suicide is actually one of our nation's biggest problems and uh, I've lost so many people I'm close to su to suicide and know so many countless more stories of people in chronic pain and that could be mental pain or physical pain um, to take their lives because they just can't deal so it's fatal not that I'm trying to legitimize it and say it's as bad as cancer or whatever I'm just saying both can be fatal so um, no I don't know where I was going with all that but now my nose is runny because I was crying for no apparent reason um, yeah so I'm just going to lay back again and just use my right arm good thing it's my right arm though see there's always like bright things um now that i'm like so fogged diana diane diana diane is it diane oh she comments all the time and i talk to her on facebook and i talk to her all the time i'm so sorry I, you you understand that my mind is not here with me right now um she had the coolest idea and um, I thought it matched perfectly with this other idea that I have. I wanted to do a D DIY on it. Um, is uh, I do worry boxes and I did them when I kind of was like looking into meditation and like those type of things um, way back like when I was in middle school or teenager and I found this really great book called Don't Sweat the Small Stuff. If you have not read it, it's amazing. I love it. Um, and, uh, and throughout that, like, there was, um, this idea of a worry box, and you would write down your worry. Good thing I have this here, because I can show you. Write out a worry, and then you just put it, well, well, you can do whatever you want with it, and then you put it in the worry box, and you're mentally supposed to leave it there. Um, sometimes, you know, like, people would we can pray and like things like that but sometimes people need something more tangible I remember one of the most powerful things that we did at my church um, at life point was we wrote down things that we wanted to lay at the foot of the cross but we pinned them onto a cross and that was just like wow if you want to talk about crying I was gone that whole time it was really powerful and to see all of them like not one person was like really have anything that I need to like pin to the cross no nah, not a worry in the world I don't sin ever don't feel bad about anything so it was just really powerful so but she has such an awesome one that I think is even more important to balance that out with 
because she was talking about journaling and she really got this for me because and this is so cool because it's, it's cool how like people God puts people in our each other's lives to just say these like little things that you're like that so just went right to me because my therapist for years and years and years because I've been seeing the therapist for so long have always said journal 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 and I always found that journaling made me more depressed and it was because of what I journaled about because you want to vent and like so you talk about like pretty much bad things like I never was like dear journal today I had the best time with my friends and we talked about this this and this and then we talked about praying and then we talked about our you know like you don't talk about that stuff today you, you know like that's just not what I guess like you really like think about with journaling so she had um I really should have thought this through because she has like a name for it that was so clever but it's um oh what does she call it she'll put it down in the comments Crap. um i'll probably talk again again because this is super long and i don't know how many of you guys will actually watch this to, to the end of this anyways after i started crying and like people are like well she's really looped out but um it's pretty much a diary that you write one thing that you're grateful for that day. And this is something that I've touched on a couple times is that um, small victories and there's always something to be grateful for that day, whether it's that I'm still breathing or I got to pet my dog, like really like pick little things. And so she has a journal that she picks something each day that she's grateful for. And I thought that was such a wonderful idea and I asked her if I could share it with you guys because um, I just think it's such a good idea um, especially if you are gonna do journaling if you are a journaler that you really vent out a lot of like your negative emotions like it's always good to balance it out um, with uh, with some good times and things you're grateful for I have to sit, lay back down so this is going to be the end of this. Uh, I'm not going to be able to edit, so I'm sorry about that. But I um, hope you guys have a pain free, stress free day. Sending out XO Blues. And I will talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye! Let's just my radar.